We knew Julian loved football when he was in diapers running on this field. <laughs> My first memories are being in a diaper, running around doing bag drills as an example for my dad's Pee Wee Pop Warner team. Pop Warner were probably our best days. The whole family was involved. My oldest son was playing and coaching. Julian was playing. My daughter was cheerleading. My wife was doing souvenirs and fundraising, and I was coaching. Everyone knows Coach Edelman around Redwood City. Frank Edelman barely played any football himself, but he took his responsibilities as coach and Pop Warner president very seriously. I remember he bought a big case of VHSs to learn the wing tee and coaching strategy. And every Monday, he'd have the coaching staff over for dinner. My mom would cook dinner, and, and they would watch film of 12-year-old kids. Edelman off left tackle. He's gone. Very nice speed. Edelman breaks once. Outside left. They were like bowling pins. He ran through everybody, and he was the smallest guy out there. Edelman up to his old tricks. I don't think he had a lot of fun playing football. He was so serious. And if you're serious, I mean, you're having fun, but you're not really having fun because you're serious. Edelman, who else? Intercepted. I don't know how much fun he had. He just loved it. And all the touchdowns here today Scored by Julian Edelman. My dad always used to tell me when I was a young boy, when you got them down, you break their neck. That's what he used to tell me. I was like 12, I'm like, dad. It's like, that's kind of, that's, that's a lot. Little guys, 12-year-old kids really love the F word. So if you get them all in a huddle and mom and dad aren't around, and you pop that F word out, they look at you and go, cool, coach. You know, there's some, there's some, there, you know, and really, if you're a coach, you get that. You don't make it a habit. That's why I am the way I am, though. Jules knows the rules. I mean, you know, there's, there's no sniveling. The little Frank in my head comes and saying, no sniveling. Not really sniveling, can't snivel. You know, no sniveling, he probably said. You know, the no sniveling, don't snivel. Not sniveling? Quit sniveling. Every day from work, I'd come home, and all the kids would do their homework. First thing. And then we'd go out. We'd help with practice for baseball. I would start shagging balls, but then after like hour or two, I would just sit out there. It'd be like a rainy day, we would go to like a the crappiest field. My dad would be hitting me ground balls because he wanted the unnecessary hops. Basketball, he'd tie my hand behind my back to make me dribble with my left and use my left because he heard Jason Williams' dad did it. My buddies used to watch me go out here at Roosevelt and, you know, they all said, Frank, man, you're throwing too hard to that kid. I go, yeah, I know. When I was 14 or 13, we were taking batting practice before a game, and so I'm Tip of my shoulder hitting pop-ups, and my dad's getting pissed, and he brushes me off the plate. And I got so mad, I threw my bat down, I charged the mound on him. He one-twos me. I'm on the ground trying to like get my dad. I ended up grabbing his two hands, and I was blocking his feet. We were spread, right? I was on top, and I had his hands and his feet all locked in and he was bucking with his head, trying to hit me with his, with his head. <laughs> and he bit his mouth. And he bit his mouth with those braces and blood got all over. And I went to the game with like a, a bloody nose and a jersey. You know, it, that's the way it was back then. That's the way I learned. That's the way, you know, things have changed. Yeah, I mean, he, my dad was definitely tough on me, but I needed that. You know, I was a little punk. I needed to be toughed up.